So today we're going to discuss robotic simple prostatectomy. Not to be confused with radical prostatectomy, which is for prostate cancer. Simple prostatectomy doesn't mean that it's easy or not complicated. It just refers to the fact that the operation is not being done for cancer. It's being done for benign enlargement. So this is anatomy of the urinary tract. The person is facing this way. This is the front, and the body sliced right down the middle. You can see the penis in the front, the testicles, the anal opening.、And、the way the body is designed, the、um, intestinal tract is towards the back, where the stool goes, and the urinary tract is in the front. This is the bladder, which holds the urine, and the urethra, which passes through the prostate. This orange thing is the prostate. And it goes out the urethra through the penis. The prostate looks like two separate halves here, but it's only because it's been sliced in half. It is a walnut-sized gland that surrounds the whole urethra, and there's essentially a hole in the middle of it where the urine passes. When you pee, the urine passes through the prostate, across the sphincter, which opens when you pee, and out the urethra. As a man gets older, and the prostate enlarges, it can encroach on or compress the urethra channel, making the stream work、uh, much weaker, harder to urinate, harder to get the stream started. Maybe、um, having to urinate twice in a row, feeling of not emptying, occasionally not being able to pee at all, and having to have a catheter put in. Most of the procedures for、uh, BPH. Are designed to carve out a wider opening in this channel, either using electrical energy or lasers.、Uh, there's more than 20 different procedures that exist to try and open up the prostate channel. Urolift is another example where instead of removing tissue here, the prostate is propped open using some anchors.、Uh, but the problem comes where the prostate is very enlarged, more than 80 to 100 cubic centimeters. We can figure that out by taking some measurements on imaging, either an ultrasound or a CAT scan or MRI, for example. When the prostate gets really large like this, those procedures that are designed to carve out a channel are much more difficult to do and tend not to work so well. So there's two procedures、uh, that are designed to combat uh, uh, prostates that are in this range of sizes. One is called a enucleation or HOLEP, holmium laser enucleation of the prostate, and the other is robotic simple prostatectomy. In order to understand what's happening with those, you have to understand a little bit more about this anatomy. The prostate really actually has zones.、Uh, there's an outer capsule, which is shown in orange. It's sort of like if you imagine an orange. This is the rind or the peel of the orange. And then the inner part of the prostate, which is sort of like the orange itself. And if you were to stick your finger in between、uh, those two layers, you could actually carve out the、um, the middle of the prostate. That was an old-fashioned procedure called an open simple prostatectomy. The procedure done through the penis without any cuts externally is the laser enucleation, and essentially. That separation is made using a laser. The internal part of the prostate is pushed into the bladder. It's chopped up, and the little pieces are sucked out through the urethra. Now,、um, that's a nucleation. We can accomplish the exact same thing with a robotic procedure. We make little cuts on your belly, and we open the bladder. We go in the bladder and we do the same thing. We carve out that separation between the outer capsule of the prostate. We scoop out the interior. Those internal lobes of the prostate get removed. The bladder stitched up again, and then a cool thing happens. The inside of the bladder has a smooth, slippery lining, very similar to the inside of your cheek. Over the next few days to weeks, that lining just grows to cover that prostate capsule. So it's almost like this prostate area becomes an extension of the bladder in a way. And so when you pee, you pee without any blockage, and the stream should improve 
like you're in your 20s again. Um, so that's the final outcome after either enucleation or robotic simple prostatectomy. The only difference being enucleation, the doctor works through the penis, through the urethra without any external cuts. And in the robotic simple, the doctor works from the other direction, working from the bladder side. Um, it's important to point out this right here is the external urinary sphincter. That's the muscle that pinches the tube closed and prevents accidents while you're just trying to hold your urine. With any of these procedures, there's about a 1% risk of injury to that muscle. The exact way the injury happens is not entirely clear, uh, but about 1% of patients will have trouble holding the urine with leakage, for example, with coughing or sneezing. So that's robotic simple prostatectomy in a nutshell.